I always said to myself, I'll never record in this shirt. Why? Not only because it's old, but it says to the disco. That's pretty old school, isn't it? But then when I was sent the Creative Sound Blaster Jam V2, it made me think of the days when you had your Walkman in and you're walking around with your cool headphones and you used to think you were the absolute coolest kid in the block. At least that was my opinion. Now the headphones are pretty much, well, kind of taking the old school but also taking a lot of new technology inside as well. The headphones cost around £31 in the UK and around $40 in the US. Links will be down in the description below in case you're interested. So jumping straight into what you get in the box, you've got the headphones and you've got a Type-C to Type-A cable. This is around 1.2 to 1.3 meters long, although I would have actually liked it to be longer because you can actually connect up the headphones other than Bluetooth to your computer via a wired connection and we'll touch upon that further down in this review. Now you've got some extra ear pads which is nice to see and given the price range it's actually quite refreshing to see Creative have included something that we'll think about more of longevity. Now in terms of the headphones themselves, they're extremely lightweight. They weigh roughly 84 grams and they've got an all plastic enclosure and design which means they're not going to weigh down on your head. Furthermore, given they've got an on-ear design as well, I think most people will be comfortable wearing these. Now I'm not a fan of on-ear headphones generally because of the passive isolation that they don't provide, but in this case I was actually pretty impressed because the headphones have got a good clamp force. Not only will they stay on you my head, personally, and this is I guess subjective in terms of my head shape and size, but they stay on my head, they don't fall off if I'm doing, let's say, strenuous exercises, and likewise they don't cause discomfort when I'm sitting at my desk with my reading glasses, and therefore don't put too much pressure around my ears. So whatever Creative have managed to achieve over here should definitely be commended. Now the headband can be adjusted to a certain degree, so I think most head shape sizes will be able to effectively have a good um, fit on them, and as you can see, the clamp force is as you're a little bit weak in this respect, and gives you a a large amount of adjustment so I think most people will have no problems fitting these over their ears. Now on the right hand side driver you do have some controls and here what you'll find is a play and pause button which also doubles up as activating your voice assistant when you're connected over Bluetooth. You've got a volume up and down which also double up as um, previous and next if you hold them down and then you've got a bass button which adds or detracts from the bass and we'll touch upon this in terms of the sound quality section further down in the review. Now I should also mention that I'm not too much of a fan of this little LED button which stays illuminated and flashes whilst you are paired to your device. So in this case I'm paired up to my phone over Bluetooth and you can still see that it's actually still flashing. I wish that Creative had kind of eliminated this and I've seen this present on some of their other products but I just don't think it's actually necessary. Necessary. Now when it comes to playback these headphones have 22 hours of battery life which is pretty insane and from my tests I felt that that was pretty accurate to what the manufacturer claims. Furthermore they can be fully recharged from between one to two hours which means that you're never going to have to really charge them up or worry about them running out of charge over time and from my previous experience of the Jam V1 I must say the battery does retain really well in terms of the overall battery life let's say. Now furthermore the Type-C connection connector over type or micro USB is definitely appreciated and given the price of the headphones it's again pretty surprising but also refreshing. Now moving on to software you've got the Creative app and I just want to quickly show you on Windows over here how it looks like. If I just go into properties you can see over here you've got 24 bit 48 and 24 bit 44.1 kilohertz. Now in terms of recording I didn't actually get it to work you can see over here my mod mics being picked up but it does pick up as a default microphone I'm not really sure if that's to do with my setup or something but regardless you have also got the um, proprieties of the um, recording ability so you've got your mic volume and you can see it's set to 100. Now moving on from there we've then got the app itself it's pretty simple the mixer will just give you what you get in Windows uh, so your playback volume and your recording uh, mixer volume and going back we've then got the equalizer. Now what I don't really like about the equalizer is the fact that if you are to adjust let's say the preamp or treble or bass over here it doesn't adjust the individual frequency bands and if you were to adjust the frequency bands likewise it's not going to affect what the bass and preamp and treble do over here and you've got some preset EQs over here which again do not reflect what you can see over here so I feel that creative need to kind of work on that but on the plus side it does work and it does mean that you can EQ your your headphones. The only thing to worth bearing in mind over here is that when you're to EQ it, it's going to be on the app, not via your headphones. 
So even if you save your profile, if you then take the headphones to, let's say, a Bluetooth device, this equalizer preset that you've set won't go to your headphones. So it doesn't store your well EQ profile, which might be a little bit of an oversight or potentially something that some people will be uh, looking after. Now, on the plus side, I don't feel that you have to EQ the headphones, and we'll touch upon the sound quality section in just a bit, but it's good to see that you have actually got the option on PC. Now, on the other uh, tabs, it's pretty uh, straightforward. It's what you get on your um, on your Windows device, as I showed before. So you've got your audio, recording, and then you've got the settings, and you can reset, look for drivers, and both the application and the device itself. Now, elsewhere, I like the fact that the physical buttons on the headphones allow you to interact with, let's say, Windows Media Player or any other player that you're going to be using. So here, if I press on the button, you can see it is basically play and pausing and if I were to hold down the plus button it's going to go next and likewise if I go hold down the minus button it goes to previous. Furthermore the volume of the headphones can be adjusted again by pressing up and down on the buttons and you can see it's adjusting the overall Windows volume not be able to see it but on the top left hand side is adjusting my Windows 10 volume. So this is just great integration I think it's just a nice little step up in comparison to other headphones which are wired but don't have these sort of controls that are integrated and baked into them. Regardless of my problems when it came to recording on PC, I had no issues when it came to using it with my mobile phone and everything you can hear right now is coming directly from the headphones. What I will say is the audio quality is sufficient. It's not amazing. It does sound a little bit muffled, but on the whole, it's not bad for a set of headphones, which are relatively inexpensive. Now, on the subject of being paired up to my phone, these headphones, of course, have Bluetooth, as I've mentioned quite a few times in this review. And here, it's really nice to see that you not only have the SBC and APTX codecs, but you've got the APTX HD and APTX low latency codecs as well. Unfortunately, AAC is not supported, so Apple users out there will be having to revert to the lowest quality SBC codec. Now, I would like to say that I had no issues when it came to watching videos on my mobile phone so therefore I had no latency or video lag problems and furthermore the headphones support two devices being simultaneously paired to it and playing back audio. Just a quick little note however, if you do plug these into your PC, it will overwrite the Bluetooth function and therefore switch it off. So therefore you can't be listening to a your source device, let's say your phone via Bluetooth, plugging in via your, your PC and then having a wired connection and Bluetooth connection simultaneously running, at least not from my experience and from my tests that I conducted. Now with that in mind, I was paired up to my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and here I was utilizing the APTX codec. And as a result, it allowed me to get the better quality transmission over Bluetooth. Now, in terms of the sound quality, I will say in a nutshell that it's not amazing. It will sound a little pushed back and recessed, V-shaped, and just sounds a little bit claustrophobic given that the driver sizes are pretty small. But on the whole, I was actually pleasantly surprised. So let's break it down in terms of the overall sound frequency range. First off, in terms of the sub bass, well, you do get a somewhat bit of low end extension, but it does sound cut off. Even when you are to enable the bass function EQ via the headphones themselves, or if you were to tailor an EQ via PC, what you'll find is the headphones just struggle to portray that low end frequency. Is it to be surprised about given that these are on-ear headphones and are relatively inexpensive? Absolutely not, but it's just worth setting your expectations and keeping them in check. As for the mid-bass, it does sound quite overpowering, specifically when you enable that bass EQ. However, the bass isn't that controlled and sounds a little bit wobbly, and in comparison to more expensive headphones out there on the market, you'll find that the Jam V2 just sounds, well, just a little bit uncontrolled at times. Still, it's plenty exciting and will keep you on your toes when you're listening to your music. Now as for the mid-range, it is pushed back and recessed as I mentioned before, but on the plus side it's very accurate. Now if you have the chance of using these headphones on PC, as I showed before, you can EQ them. And as a result, you can boost that mid-range up and not be, well, sacrificing that mid-range accuracy. So it's impressive to see that these have a good scalability when it comes to EQing them. Now as for the highs, in my opinion, they do tail off a little bit at the top end, but provide you enough excitement to your music to keep you, well, excited when you're listening to any sort of tracks. Now as for the sound stage, it's unsurprising that these on-ear, relatively small driver headphones have got a closed sound stage. 
there's a very well inherent lack of width and depth to them and furthermore when it comes to instrument separation they just really won't compete with headphones that cost well more money and this really naturally leads me onto my verdict where I feel that these headphones are very much good and fit for purpose. They're a definite improvement over the V1 headphones which I reviewed well quite a number of years ago but in comparison to other on-ear headphones that you can find on the market I think these are simple and yet effective. They support all the right codecs that you'd like to see in a modern day set of headphones and even then you'll see headphones that cost double triple the price that don't support aptx or aptx hd and yet they provide the on-ear experience that those people who are either old school or new school will definitely appreciate now given the fact that these headphones can be found for roughly around 32 to 31 pounds in the uk and around 40 dollars in the us I definitely think they deserve my value award because well they're good value for money and of course if you set your expectations in check you're going to find yourself some great budget on-ear headphones which are these creative sound blaster jam v2 headphones not quite a mouthful to say but anyway hopefully you go to the disco as i will do potentially at one day when lockdown ends or something like that and of course if you like this video give it a like subscribe and hit that bell notification to keep up with the channel and if you want to keep up with my shenanigans as i mentioned before check me out on social media i'm on instagram on twitter anyway take care of you guys bye bye